Blinks, in many ways, is the classic startup. You know, we have a, a very big vision. Um, we have some incredibly smart people, um, and we have some very believing investors who, who you know, who, who appreciate and understand both the passion and the technology that that goes with the team. Um, yes, we're a very small team. You know, we're, we're just. A, 28 people, I think, today, um, and you know we're, we're growing, but 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 certainly not at the rate that some of the the, the monoliths in the internet industry are. Um, but the interesting thing is, is that you know. I think if you look at the video search space, as I said before, there's been a lot of complacency. People have assumed that they can just reuse what they've learned and done with regular search. Um, whereas in actual fact, it's a very, very different problem. Video is not text. You know, let me say it again, video is not text. Um, and in, in that sense, it needs a fresh pair of eyes to look at it. One interesting thing from a technological point of view when it comes to defensibility and, and all that is that, you know, Understanding video is a very fuzzy engineering style problem. Um, it's a very different kind of problem to a pure algorithms computer science problem. I'm a computer scientist. I'm much better at regular search probably than I am at video search. Most of my team, on the other hand, are engineers who are real experts at the fuzzy stuff. You know, understanding that nothing's quite black and white, it's usually gray. Um, whereas computer scientists think very much in zeros and ones, in blacks and whites. So it's actually a very different problem. It's amazing how a lot of the people who are really smart at some of the existing search companies don't really have the right kind of mindset for the world that we're talking about with understanding speech you know trying to pick up fuzzy things like is that a beautiful sunset or a pretty sunset you know that's a fuzzy a subjective thing and computers can help guess at that but they they'll never be perfect and that's a very different mentality um, it actually fits much much better someone from a sort of creative background than it does someone from a purely technology background so there's a there's a big void a big big separation in the sorts of people you need we were set up from day one to solve this problem and as such I think we have the right kind of people on board. Having said all of that, it's of course always a challenge and a threat. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if you were setting up a software company in the 80s or the 90s, the first question everybody asked was, surely Microsoft will do it. And, you know, this decade, the first question everybody asks is, surely Google will do it. And there's always a scary gorilla like that, you know, a few feet behind you. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you believe in innovation and if you, if you think that there is complacency in some part of the market, it's, I almost think it's our duty. You know, people like us, it's our duty to basically go for it and, and build something and show people what's possible. Um, even if it means other people catch up one day, you'll still have made, you know, you'll still have contributed to the overall good. So yes, yeah, so historically, there were really um, sort of two methods at, at cracking the video search problem. The first was, used, was to use metadata, which is the textual information that's often attached to the video content. So it might be a title, a summary, um, some tags, for example, a description, that kind of thing. Um, the beauty of that is that you can use or reuse existing web search technology because that's already very good at reading text. And you can just say, well, given I've read this text next to this video, I can you know, assume that the video is about the same topic. Um, the second methodology, which is popular with offline um, video content like TV, is to read the closed captioning. That's very powerful because you do get word for word what people are talking about. The, the negative, the, the disadvantage there is that on the web, almost no content actually has closed captioning. So it only really solves a 1% problem for, for the majority of the content that's out there. Um, I think for a long time there was a lot of complacency in the in the sort of video search world around the fact that those two methods would work. Um, but as the amount of content has grown, it's become obvious that they both have their faults. The big problem with closed captioning, as I said, is the fact that it's actually not that ubiquitous, um, and it certainly isn't common enough to be useful. And the big problem with metadata is that it's all too easy to get it wrong, or to, for that matter, be misled. Um, you know, you can tag your video as being about one topic, but it could actually be something quite different. And people do that all the time. It's you know, called tag spamming. You basically put a word which you know is searched for a lot into your video, even if it's not actually what the, what the topic of the video is. So for, for, that, for those reasons, those two methods have basically fallen into some disrepute. Um, the, What's new and what's interesting, and this is certainly what, what Blinks thinks that, that the future sort of lies in, is using computers to actually understand and listen to and watch the video itself. So, you know, yes, read the metadata, and we do, you know, accept that as being useful, certainly from some sources. But beyond that, don't stop at just the words around the video, actually go into the video itself. Um, so we use speech recognition to have software literally, you know, sit back and listen to word for word what's being recorded. We also have various visual analysis modules, which actually have computers watching 
different bits of the video as well. So we're able to do things like break up longer videos into separate scenes so that if there's a particular scene that's relevant to you more than another scene, then we can show you hopefully a clip from the relevant scene and so on. So it's about, it's about using that kind of technology um, in, in a way to basically have computers automatically understand what's going on rather than just relying on the words that you've been told are probably related to the, to the video.